So today we are going to be talking about the production of dental x-rays. So I will be referencing this because this is just taking a look inside the tube head in case I need to reference something. All right. So first off, the x-ray machine will be plugged into the wall and when it is turned on, the electricity will travel from the outlet to the x-ray machine as 110 to 220 volts. Because the machine doesn't need that many volts yet, it will actually enter the step down transformer. And as you can see here, the step down transformer, AKA the low voltage transformer, will convert the incoming voltage into three to five volts. Going on, the three to five volts will then enter the tube that contains the negative cathode, as you can see here. The volts will then heat the tungsten filament in the cathode and make the filament glow, as you can see here. Depending on the MA setting, that will determine how many electrons are going to be produced and how hot the filament will be. The heat will then let the electrons separate from their atoms, aka thermionic emission. And then the electrons will stay hovering in an electron cloud around the tungsten filament in the molybdenum focusing cup. Okay. So then going on, the clinician hidden by a nice lead lined wall will press the exposure button. The line current will then enter the step up transformer, AKA the high voltage circuit, see here, and it will convert the three to five volts into 65,000 to 100,000 volts. Depending on the KVP setting, it will determine the speed that the electrons will travel. To knock an electron out of the innermost shell of an atom, at least 70,000 volts are required. Um, the step up transformer increased the voltage and will help propel the electrons towards the anode, as you can see here. Okay, going on. The electrons will then collide with the tungsten target at the end of the anode. When the electrons hit the target, it results in x-ray radiation. Out of all the kinetic energy, 1% radi will be radiation, and the other 99% will be lost in heat energy. And then you can see here that the copper stem surrounding the target will absorb 99% of heat energy and disperse it around the tube that has insulating oil in it. All right. The reason the tungsten target is at an angle, as you can see here, is so it can direct the x-rays towards the window and PID. The x-rays that aren't used will be absorbed by the lead glass housing surrounding the cathode and anode, as you can see here, before it exits the window. Um, the useful and primary beam will exit the window, right here. Then the x-rays will go past the tube head seal and the unleaded glass window they will then go through the aluminum disc filters, as we can see here, which will get rid of the long wavelength x-rays and leave the short wavelength x-rays untouched. Then the x-rays will travel through the lead collimator right here, and that will narrow and restrict the x-ray beam to a specific size. Finally, the beam will exit the tube head and travel through the PID or position indicating device and go through the opening. Then the x-rays will lastly be directed towards the film or the sensor in the patient's mouth. And there is how you get the production of dental x-rays.